This is a great example of something that the SAT thinks is hard, but is really just about going through the motions. Basically, this is a plug points into equations question. We have some values. We have a height. We have a volume of this cone. And then, of course, where's the equation? Well, it's in the reference chart, right? So for many of the geometry questions, especially the equations for volume, are going to be just given to us in the reference chart. So just go and steal them. So you have to know what a cone is, right? It's not labeled, but that's a cone. Uh, does it matter that it's a right circular cone? No, that just means that the height is going to be perpendicular to the radius, right? So perpendicular, that's a right angle. That's why it's called the right cone. And I guess a circular cone is it's completely circular on the bottom rather than maybe like kind of more like a, an oval, right? That would maybe be a different kind of cone. But I wouldn't know any of the formulas for that. We're not going to worry about that. So I, they're just basically throwing extra adjectives at us for no particular reason. So it's a cone. So we're going to use that formula. Volume is one third pi r squared h. So if I had my scratch paper, I would definitely write that down is uh, one third pi r squared h. And I'm going to basically then just plug points into equations, right? So I have a volume of one third pi. And then I'm trying to find the radius, right? So let's keep that as r squared. And then the height is nine. So at this point, I would just kind of do some algebra here. Um, one thing I would notice is let's get rid of the pi's right away. The one thirds are also going to cancel out pretty nicely. But I worry that if we do that, we might kind of uh, get confused about what we're left over with. So maybe a better thing to do is let's just multiply. Um, let's just, yeah, actually, let's just multiply the right side. A better thing to do when you have both algebra, when you have algebra to do, you should usually do arithmetic first, right? Take care of one side and clean that side up rather than moving things across when you haven't simplified one side. So we can take the one third of nine and that's three R squared. Now I'm going to divide by three, which is the same as multiplying by one third, right? So if I multiply this side by one third, that cancels out, that cancels out. And on this side, that's going to be one ninth is equal to r squared. Now at this point, uh, I know how to take the square root of a fraction. It is just take the square root of the top, square root of the bottom. So that's nice for me. That means the radius is one third. That is choice A. But at this point, if, if at, really at any point, you could have gone to Desmos and actually solved this if you wanted to. You could have even done with the pies and everything like that. Um, but this is some pretty basic plug points and equations. The algebra is maybe a little messy. But remember, you also have the advantage of guess and check here if you want. To me, you know, I know this is in my mix of twisted geometry questions, but the only twist here is that they gave us the volume and we had to work backwards to solve the radius. Whereas normally when we think, when we learn all these formulas, especially, we are given radiuses and heights and the volume is always what we're solving for, right? We actually love it when formulas work that way, where there's one kind of thing that gets spit out, one easy side of the formula. That's how we think formulas work. One of the biggest moves the SAT makes, not just in geometry, but everywhere, is they take a formula that you're familiar with, and instead of giving you the, the kind of parts that go into the middle, that go into the messy side, they give you one of the things that's supposed to come out of the formula, and then you have to solve for one of the pieces that you normally would have started with. It's a very common twist. It's not that big of a deal if we just think about basic algebra and equations, because we're still plugging points in, we just pay attention to where they go, and then we solve for whatever's left over. That's all this question is. In fact, this is barely geometry. This is more algebra than anything else.